everybody, Farmington Mayor Nate Duckett here. On today's episode of The Mayor's Table, we're going to talk about San Juan Generating Station, Enchant Energy, and the future of power production here in the Four Corners. Good morning, everybody. Farmington Mayor Nate Duckett here with a special guest today, City Manager Rob Mays. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Mr. Mayor. We wanted to give an update on this uh, bright and sunny Monday morning to our community about what's taken shape here over the past, uh, well, less than a week, really, yeah. with the San Juan Generating Station, the City of Farmington, Enchant Energy, and kind of all these moving pieces that we've been working on uh, really since, I don't know, maybe since November, December, when we started this process of marketing our ownership rights of the power plant, finding Enchant Energy, who was Acme uh, LLC at that time, going to Santa Fe for the 60-day session to, to try and work in opportunities within the ETA uh, Energy Transition Act bill to provide us a little bit of a wiggle room on the dates so that we could implement a project like this too. Contract negotiations and all this stuff where we sit here in August and just came off a Thursday night special council meeting where we signed essentially the contract that provides the, it's the purchase agreements or it's the first step of the purchase agreement mm -hmm. providing Enchant Energy with 95 percent of the ownership rights for operation past 2022. Yeah uh, it's a great backdrop to this this episode this, this is a great time in Farmington you know our community has faced so many body blows of one bad piece of news after another from the losses of jobs in the oil and gas sector to the whittling away of jobs by attrition at the mine and at the at the power plant to just one bad loss after another and today is a day really for to celebrate and have a lot a lot of good reason for enthusiasm and hope regarding one aspect of our economy and that's the potential for saving nearly 1600 direct and indirect jobs at the San Juan Generating Station and Associated Power Plant. And as you say, this is a culmination and there's still lots of work to do. But this really began, I think back over the last two and a half years since the announcement was made that P&M intended to exit the plant in January of 2022. There's little else that probably has, if probably nothing has, um, has dominated the efforts and interests and concern of, of the Farmington City government over the last two years, starting with two mayors, beginning back with Mayor Tommy Roberts, you obviously coming onto the scene, two legislative sessions, and now, as you said, six months of intense, productive contract no, no, you know, negotiations with Enchant Energy to, to put us at the precipice now of real success. So I wanted to kind of I wanted to make sure we, we utilize this moment to uh, dispel of some concerns that might be on the public about what the city of Farmington was really getting themselves into yeah. with Enchant Energy. Uh, I want to kind of make sure we we get people the right information. Um, so right off the bat, I think one of the first things that I get asked all the time is, did the city of Farmington buy San Juan yeah. Generating Station and the coal mine? Yeah, that's really one of the most extraordinary aspects of this and the answer to that question was set in motion in 1981 when the city of Farmington entered into an owner's agreement ultimately with nine uh, total owners to, to own and operate the San Juan generating station and that owner's agreement is set to expire in January 2022 hence this date January 2022 that wasn't some mystical date right that is the expiration date in. of the contract that is the date that the owner's agreement expires and everybody has to determine their plan going forward. But built into that agreement was every owner on November of 2018, which we've just passed, had to declare their intentions for a new ownership agreement post-2022. All the owners are exiting the plant with the exception of the city of Farmington, Farmington Electric Utility. In that contract, the key terms were, as any owner exits, their ownership share automatically conveys to any remaining sh remainers free of charge. So to, to answer your question where well, there's been so much confusion, why would the city of Farmington risk money buying a coal plant? Right. We own 5% of a coal plant. 
but we just inherited the other 95% of the value of probably, a, if it's operating, an $800 million to a $1 billion asset we inherited for free. And that's where we, we were in November 2018. And that was a very strategic, that was very strategic on our part to say that we wanted to stay in because we, we had this belief that we could find a buyer, yeah. a merchant uh, operator for the power plant. And so, is, I mean, can you think of any other municipality that you ever have ever heard of who has been in that position, that unique position to market the ownership rights to a power it's, plant? It's absolutely extraordinary, and you know, from our, from our perspective, you know, a historic opportunity to to make an unbelievable difference in, in the lives of, of so many people in this community, and this region, and frankly, the state and the nation. This is one of, if not the largest, industrial sites in the state of New Mexico, private, right. and and it needs to continue to operate. And so, that's exactly right. So, in November, December timeframe, just seven short months ago, eight months ago we found ourselves the owners of this power plant post-22. So we hired a, essentially, just simple, it applies not like a realtor. We hired an agent, a, a, a um, law firm in Washington, D.C. that specializes in energy, large energy transactions, to market the, the, the plant to see if there was another owner. And I'll say we probably had our vision set pretty low at that time. We were hoping for anything, three, five years. And, and we had but, some pretty interesting people come out of the woodworks we did. who were interested in utilizing the power yeah. at San Juan Generating Station, but they, they weren't providing any long-term exactly use right. that was going to keep the job Bitcoin, in the coal mine. And, miners and things like that that were short-term that, frankly, we could have used to help us yeah. bridge the gap to the, to the closing. But along came Enchant Energy. So February of 2019, uh, just about just a little about six and a half months ago, and Chan Energy came, uh, recruited again, um, initial feasibility and screening by our, our our agent and attorney in DC, brought Acme Enterprise or, or Equ Equities to the table, and they came and presented this vision for a long-term sustainable operation of the of the generating station in the coal mine that involved instead of fighting the environmental. Um, regulations that are proliferating around the nation regarding coal, instead of fighting it, would comply, and in fact, more than comply. And that came to us right smack in the middle of the last legislative session where you and I know we felt like we camped and spent a lot of time, countless sessions and countless testifying before hearings, all associated with how we could keep the plan open and and ultimately comply with the new energy right. you know, act. And that's, and, and talk about compliance, that law requires 11, 11, a limitation of 1,100 pounds of carbon per megawatt hour. This plant with carbon sequestration is 210. I want to definitely point out some of those important things yeah. regarding how the plant complies now with the ETA. Um, the fact that this plant in, in the CO2 sequestration world, we're going we're gonna to be limiting the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere that will we'll comply with California's That's right. uh, laws as well. National markets. Yeah. Um, so again, we didn't buy it. We inherited the 100% ownership rights. We've marketed those, those rights out there. We found a buyer. We did a letter of intent in February. We've been working on a contract to basically hand over the rest of the 95% of those rights to Enchant. Uh, the, the term that was used Thursday night was Enchant would be essentially stepping in the shoes of Farmington. And now, and, and so let's go to Thursday night. Yeah. Uh, Thursday night we had a, a very good turnout in a, a special council session. Um, I've enjoyed the fact that there's been engagement from our coal miners uh, and, and, Power plant workers. and this for this meeting, what we hadn't seen in Santa Fe, yeah. we had uh, San Juan Generating Station power plant workers at the meeting. Um, all obviously talking about the thing that we've been working for, and that is we're a community. This is where our families live. We want to stay in this area. We want good paying jobs. And please, you know, basically what we heard last night was please sign this agreement. Let's give Enchant the opportunity to do what they say they're going to do, um, which is going to continue uh, and actually probably grow the amount of jobs. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to put any, any words out there, of course, that we can't back up, but that is our belief with the, with the plans that they've set forward. So last night, council passed it unanimously, this, this agreement, which um, 
keeps us maintained at 5% ownership, which is our current ownership agreement right now. So we are not growing our liabilities as far as current or future liabilities. What's in our ownership agreements right now, we, we pay 5% of our costs, the associated things with being that. Mm -hmm. But what I think is cool is now we're not just 5% owner of one unit, we're 5% owner of both units. Yep. Um, so if one unit, if our unit were to go down right now, we're kind of we have to go to the market for the power. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're able to utilize both. Yeah. Um, and then get into a little bit beyond. What, that's all we're owning. Yeah. Is that five percent that we still own? Yeah. The contract is the key to solving the the potential risks and exposure. So you'd ask, what are kind of the main misconceptions, misinformation, sometimes it's been put out there willfully and sometimes accidentally. Well, we already mentioned the first one, that Farmington's gonna invest millions of dollars to buy a, a, a dying coal plant. We didn't invest Not anything. The second one was that we're gonna invest billions of dollars in a carbon sequestration plant that, that is an unproven technology. The fact is, is the feasibility studies prove that this is a developing technology. It yeah. is feasible, it is valid. And the city of Farmington is not investing a penny in the carbon sequestration plants, so whether it's one billion or 1.3 billion. Totally separate business. Totally separate business we're right. not investing in. Yeah. A third major misconception you just touched on a minute ago is that we're gonna be taking on all these liabilities by staying in. Now through the contract, we have the appropriate protections in place that we will not, uh, we will not take on any new additional liabilities, zero associated with the carbon plant, and only maintain the same liabilities that we already have based on the same formula, all the owners, past, present, and future, in the, in, will follow the principle of the, of the current c contract going forward, is that you own your share of liabilities and your share of the benefits right. for the time that you owned it for the amount of megawatts that you had. So no additional liabilities. And then maybe a, a fourth one that we've heard a lot is that this will, this will cause farm and electric utility rates to go up when in fact it's the opposite. I want to touch on that. Okay. This is a really important component it here. Is. Uh, those who were detractors from this agreement said because of the carbon sequestration component of this power plant, power rates were going to skyrocket. Yep. And what we have managed to work in with our fantastic team is we're actually going to be, we'll have two, the lesser of two options. Either it's going to be 80% of what the five-year average has been from 2013 to 2018 for the cost of power that we've utilized. We would pay 80% of that amount. That's right. Or if we produce power lower than that, then we would get it at a lower cost. Yeah. And and a lot of people said that the adding the carbon would at raise the cost of operation of the plant. Right. Well, we're held harmless from that. In fact, as you pointed out, we actually have a, a discount below what we've paid on average for the last five years. And this plan of the carbon sequestration, which we haven't talked about the fact that the really what Enchant wants to do is sell CO2 to the Permian Basin, uh, connect in to the Kinder Morgan pipeline, the Cortez pipeline. Uh, the money that's being made from that will essentially be subsidizing the operation of that power plant. Yeah. So, you know, Councilor Scher said it the other night in the meeting, really the, the production of power is a byproduct of the CO2 plan. You could look at it that way because that's not the primary business. Now, of course, they want to sell power because there is going to be additional power available. But Farmington's going to have 5% of that. There's going to be a part of that power being produced that's going to be used for the carbon, uh, the number the one CO2. customer of the, of the gen plan will be the, the carbon plant. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, but our rate payers are not being impacted well, by this. There's and, four benefits to our rate payers. Yes. The one you just mentioned is huge. The actual effective cost of the 43 megawatts that we pull out of San Juan Generating Station as a part of our portfolio. But it goes way beyond that in terms of the public interest here, way beyond the jobs that we're going to save. There's also, for, for specific to this criticism that's going to hurt Farmington Electric Utility, not only do we have guaranteed rate and cost coming out of it, the cost in our IRP to replace that 43 megawatts is about $97 million. So we will avoid or delay the, and avoid the cost of $97 to re, million dollars to replace San Juan Generating Station. Number three, sitting there right now, we have $30 million of undepreciated capital investment that we've made over the last the few capital. years that our ratepayers have already paid for, sitting out there in a perfectly good plant that we're being forced to shut down if we don't save it. That $30 million is saved. 
And then just on the operational standpoint, our IRP shows that over the next, between now and 2000, let's see, 17 20, or 18 or, or 2027 20, 20, 20, 20, or 28, we have a net, net present value saving operationally of about 27 million. So it isn't just P&M or others that are talking about stranded assets and trying to get securitization to, to, to deal with the, you know, the, of the shutting down that asset prematurely that directly affects the city of Farmington and ratepayers. And so this is, we're protected from liability, we're not investing in this, we're potentially saving the jobs, and we're very much helping the ratepayers in, in, in our, in our uh, you know, from, from electric utility. And I think the final, the final thing, I, there may be something else we want to get in here, but the final thing in my mind, when we talk about a win-win-win scenario, the final win is for the environment. Absolutely. And we cannot deny that there's going to be coal fire power plants across the globe that are going to be built, new ones. And in this situation, we have an opportunity to utilize technology that will revolutionize, in my mind. I mean, it's going to continue to get better, just as we've seen renewable energy sources get better sure. and more widely utilized. I believe the same thing is potentially happening with carbon sequestration. There's a lot of information out there. I would tell our viewers to go to EnchantEnergy.com. A lot of great information out there to educate you know, themselves on and understand. Um, but when we're looking, if, if we want to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that's right. this is well, a critical component of doing that. Yeah, I mean, the fact is that the, the world is not done with coal. No. And shutting, forcing the shutdown of already one of the cleanest power plants in the world at San Juan General Station is not going to help global warming or environment change. In the Obama administration, under a bipartisan federal initiative, these tax credits were created to incentivize, we haven't touched on that yet. Yeah, it's, we're incentivized to, to create investment and research and development into this carbon sequestration right. technology because there's a recognition that that's what advances, just like you pointed out. Solar, wind, battery storage, all subsidized by the federal government in order to proliferate that technology. Yes. The federal government, on a bipartisan way, under the Obama administration, realized that needs to happen in carbon sequestration. Because those new plant, those plants that exist around the world now and the new ones that are going to be built, they're not going to have carbon sequestration technology on them unless the U.S. takes the lead, as always, in research and development and brings down the cost of that and, was, and makes it something that's economic and scalable. And private and, industry and, wants and, to and private, and investors. That's exactly right. Yeah. So we have a chance to be at the epic center of that. The federal government is, is heavily invested in this program through the, the, the tax credits. And in fact, without question, it's been pointed out as one of the criticisms to the plan. Well, it's just a fact of this. This, this. The reason the carbon sequestration is economic is that A, there's a market for the carbon. Right. There's a transportation method to get it there. And the federal government, through tax credits, has created a value that, that far outseed, exceeds the cost of the, of the implementation. So that, just as you said, the private sector is being attracted to invest in this area. So just imagine a vision and a scenario where Farmington goes from being viewed unfairly in many ways as a, as a center of, of environmental you know, uh, negative to an epicenter of environmental stewardship. Imagine Salmon College having partnerships and, and, and Chan Energy with, with the federal labs in research and development. Imagine carbon sequestration technicians traveling from all over the world to come here to be trained, yeah. to take that back to, to other parts of the country. The globe is not done with coal. Our challenge to the environmentalist community is to study this objectively. We understand the, the challenges. We understand where this technology is and its, and its progression. It is a proven technology, and it has a, it's going to proliferate. Why not have it be here? Why not? Why not? Have why it be not here? us be the epicenter of that? And why don't we actually, during whatever time and bridge is necessary to where renewables can be backed up by battery storage and other areas or other advancements, carbon sequestration is needed in coal and in other elements of of carbon energy for dispatchable energy that the globe is not going to turn. You said Thursday night. Uh, cheap energy has is, is made America great, and guess what? The third world isn't going to sit back anymore and stay the third world. They're going to build coal plants that burn cheap coal in order to have the economic opportunity and benefits that, 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 we've that had. we have had. Right. That's absolutely right. 
Rob, there's going to be a lot more to this story as, uh, as we kind of progress through the next steps with Enchant Energy. Uh, I believe you know, we're looking at uh, obviously dealing with, with our coal supply agreements, dealing with the, the non-extender agreements with the owners that are stepping out. So, and, and obviously with the conversations with P&M um, and the big feed study, which is the feasibility study, a, a very in-depth study that they have to have done. We're going to be talking a lot about that and making sure we keep the public apprised. Um, we just ask you to stay tuned and be sure you're tuning into the mayor's table for more information. The city website, enchantenergy.com, uh, both places to go. Um, and if you have any questions, you have any concerns, your elected officials are here. We're, we want to listen to you. We want to understand your thoughts. But I think in, in the realm of where we stood on Thursday night together, we said that it would be absolutely against all of our who we are as people. And, and unanimous uh, by the city council and mayor. To stand up for this community um, and, f and fight as hard as we can to maintain jobs in our area and grow opportunities for people to have the quality of life that we have in our city. Well, Mayor, we, we want to offer hope today to our, to our businesses, to our community, to the coal miners, the people that are depending on this and our success. And there's good reason for hope. This is reasonable. This is rational. It may even be probable. But of course, there are challenges, as we've mentioned, that still have to be worked out. We can make no guarantees, but this is, this is a, real, a real issue that's very prudent and practical and, and may and likely to happen. And while there are no guarantees, one thing's for sure, we can sit in front of anyone in this community and guarantee that, that this, our elected officials and the administration of this city, we can guarantee we have done everything we possibly can. Honestly, now for about two and a half years, to, to create this opportunity and to, and to try to extend the life of that plan in a significant way. I don't think we can belabor this point enough. We could have either chosen to do nothing and let the power plant close. And we'd be right back where we started. And we'd be right back where we started. That's right. We, we have taken a huge step forward. I have struggled and to understand the mentality of some of the naysayers that keep saying things like, you're giving false hope, or <clears throat> what if you fail? Well, what if we do? If we we're fail, right back we're right where back. we were, the, the plant will close on time as predicted. The only way this plant well. can operate is if it's with carbon sequestration, here, here making here. it the cleanest power source, cleaner than the, than the replacement power that, that P&M has proposed to replace Snow and Generation Station on a net basis. To back up the, the renewable. wind backed up by natural gas. Yeah. This is cleaner than that. It's an incredible so opportunity. It is. It's been, it's been great partnering with you through this fight. I know well, we're not done, but it's been a, a great, a great I time. I would like our public to know, though, how, how amazing it is to have the in intelligence and the expertise that has been built into this team. And I said it the other night, people here who are at the right place at the right time, doing the right things, working for the right reasons together. And, and it's, it's all about maintaining a long-term future for this this community so yeah and i know an i know viable we're, future for i know we're running over time but, but we, we we need to mention obviously the efforts of hank adair our electric utility director absolutely. jennifer brickell our, our our lead um, attorney and of course the, the team that we've put together and so it's a it's been an honor to to serve in this capacity and potentially have an impa impact that's lasting well beyond any of any of our time in office june 30 June of 2021 is a critical date, um, if I recall, in the agreement as we look at where we need to have Enchant, the revisionary rights are in there. Make sure that, uh, for our, just for our, our viewers out there, view the PowerPoint that's gonna be online, um, ask questions as you see, as you, as you need clarification, uh, but that's what we're here to do, so. Yeah. Anything else? No, Mayor. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Well, the sun was brighter this morning, I can tell you that. That's right. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the Mayor's Table. A lot more information coming forward on Enchant Energy and the City of Farmington's plans for San Juan Generator Station. Uh, we, we thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time right here on the Mayor's Table.